Hey guys, K2's Retro Workshop. Today, we're gonna finally do the soldering on this dang motherboard. I really wanted to do it at VCF, but we kept having power failure at our booth, and we weren't able to actually do the soldering there because the instant I fired up the soldering iron, it was gonna blow the breaker. Um, too many IBMs and stuff, I guess, I don't know. But, um, let's pan down here, forgive the mess. My shop is frustratingly full of stuff right now, and um, after this video is done, I may spend quite a bit of time fixing that particular issue that I'm having. Um, here is the processor that we will be looking to uh, give away here. You should have noticed the frame rate before. Yeah, this hasn't changed. I haven't soldered on it yet. Um, that's what we're going to do this video. I still haven't gotten Doom to run, but I've noticed that this motherboard is having trouble with IDE communication. And I'm wondering if my I.O. card isn't bad, but what I would like to do is do the processor swap and leave everything as is so we don't touch anything or influence anything. And then after that's done, I'm going to try a few more ISA I.O. cards and see what I can come up with. Maybe we have one that works here. So let me get kind of moved around a little bit, get things turned off, and uh, let's start soldering. There we are. mess my wires over there but look how dirty it is underneath there my cleaning didn't uh, go as well as I thought it would okay so we've removed this little guy Ooh. Um, shoot she is hot um, so we've removed this little guy now we're going to switch over to the other motherboard yeah, there was no way this was happening at VCF as fast and quick as it was um, so many people were there selling computers that weren't actually, um, you know, exhibiting them and stuff like that. And I don't think it, they were planning for, you know, uh, two dozen IBM machines to be running with their CRTs and all that. And um, adorable little black and white CRT, though. I think I got a video of that. I'm going to have to make a video about VCF. I took a lot of footage on my... Um, DVD Sony Handycam and so I have a bunch of standard definition footage to show you guys and <laughs> that should be interesting and I hope it comes out well it might be a week or two before I get that uh, like I said my shop here has reached critical mass and I need to definitely move some stuff out of here We've also got a retro computer group meeting that we've got coming up that I need to prepare for, or just take some damn machine that works here. I don't know. We'll see. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a very interesting, um, experience. Last year we went, but weren't exhibitors. And so there wasn't nearly as much to do or anything. So by, Halfway through, you know, even Saturday or Sunday, we were like, well, yeah, we could go. We don't need to be here any longer. And Sunday, when we left, I was like, well, I could probably be here for the rest of the day. But we had decided to drive back to Albuquerque already, so um, we didn't we didn't stay for the whole day on Saturday. I will say though, people were just like, I don't want to have to take this home. I'm going to throw this crap on the free pile. I even did that with a bunch of ISA cards that I had. And um, yeah, it, uh, it was an interesting experience. But I really did want to do this processor swap there, but it was not going to happen with the tools I had at hand. The power, anyway. All of everything I'm using right now to do this, I actually took with me out there to do this, but what can you do, you know? Oh. 
and then we're going to take this processor and put it on the other motherboard so that it will have the appropriate chip on there but it'll also be a terrible PC chip system there we go nice and clean all right I am betting that there is enough solder here that I don't have to actually put anymore and I can just do a straight transplant so let's uh, let's give that a try I'm fairly certain I have the chip in there the right direction I believe that is set we're gonna let this guy cool all right we are all set up again a um, couple things to note I didn't clean off the flux on here it shouldn't need to be removed anyway um, yeah the clock speed is still set to 50 megahertz so that may cause a problem I'm not sure what we're looking for really is for this thing to start showing some numbers and run through them which means that it's doing the boot up process so let's see what she does if I turned it on it would help oh, nice okay so it got to 95 and we have a 16 come on focus you know you want to there we go so we've got a 16 H here for some reason um let me look up 95 and see where it got stuck none of the codes in my PC analyzer guide make sense uh, it's the same error code but the 16H on the screen would be an indicator towards a keyboard controller failure while the number on here indicates first 64K of memory failure um, whatever I'm going to order a 40 megahertz crystal to go in here and clean up the motherboard a little bit here and maybe mess with the RAM sockets because I'm noticing that these chips here are trying to come loose on me and I don't like that. So I'm going to do that and um, unfortunately that will delay the video a little bit more but I think I can get some 40 megahertz crystals in this format stateside and uh, it won't be too bad. So let me look at the manual make sure all I have to do is swap this one crystal out and I'll be right back with you. All right it has been a couple of interesting weeks here. We swapped out the oscillator. Turns out that didn't fix the problem. So I found a dump on the Vogons forum for someone with an extremely similar motherboard, basically the same motherboard, but with a different company name on it and flashed a BIOS chip for it. It's right here. And it's an AMI BIOS. After that, bam, the 16H error cleared, gone. Now, I've been trying to get the level one, level one cache to work, and that's part of what this is. This is discrete circuitry for the flush function on the chip, and um, I do believe it needs to stay because the cache controller here doesn't necessarily clear the cache every time the processor gets put on hold. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit of experimenting to see if I really need this to be kind of cobbled onto the board or not, but for now, it's there. And you'll notice there's a CF card in here. The BIOS update fixed the hard drive problem I was having. Um, so I'm able to actually boot from a hard drive, which is way faster and way easier for troubleshooting. So that's really nice. And yeah, the finally figured out what all the different registers are to get the um, clock doubling and the cache enabled and blah 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 blah. So let's pan up to the screen real quick here and let's run a benchmark. Uh, one? Yeah. So while this benchmark is running, it's running at 40 megahertz. This oscillator is not, look how fast that's going. 
So this oscillator was downgraded from 50 megahertz to 40 megahertz because I thought maybe the chip didn't like the excess speed. Well, it wasn't clock doubling in the first place, so it wasn't that. But what I am going to try real quick is putting the 50 megahertz back in there because the ultimate goal is to get 50 megahertz. Now I am going to have to do some sort of heat sink solution on here because we're already running about ADC just at 40 megahertz. That's hot. So 19.2, what does that mean to us? Well, this processor, this motherboard, okay, no, this processor in its original motherboard did 17.8. The this motherboard with the original processor did 9.5 in this benchmark. So with the level one cache, the level two cache, we have an ultimate speed increase of what, two FPS roughly, one and a half. Not huge, but that is running a slower bus speed and we might be able to overclock it. So let's check that out. And wow, that was quick. Okay, um, 50 megahertz clock chip is back in there, meaning that the bus is running 25 megahertz and the processor clock doubled is running 50 megahertz. Um, seems to be running okay so far. I'm hoping that my little jank heat sink setup here is actually doing something and we're not frying a processor right now. So we're gonna come up here. And this is the benchmark that the giveaway is going to be basically judged on because this is what I had talked about with the giveaway. At 50 megahertz, what does this do with the cache and everything enabled? So let's start it. Let's see what we get. I'm shocked that it's stable, but I guess I shouldn't be because the other SLC 40 had no problem doing this as well. So, but it is quick. Wow. And all we changed was the oscillator on this. 24.3. Wow. That is... That is quick. 19.2 um, up to 24.3. So... Yeah. Let's uh, take a look at where we are. So we're looking at the benchmarks here and the guesses that we had on the giveaway. The... Since this is what we said the giveaway was going to be, this at 50 megahertz. And we, it looks like we range from 18 FPS to 21.1, which is a perfect ballpark if we were doing the 40 megahertz. But, looks like we've underestimated a bit, but no one went over. So no one's disqualified because of that. So, the winner is user UY6ML2NF4K. And I'll work out with them getting the processor shipped out to them. Now, yeah, this thing is quick. The only thing left to do on this to actually get it working right is going to be to figure out why it's crashing in Doom. But I was reading somewhere that there's a specific area of memory that if it's caching it, it will crash. So I'm going to play around with it a bit more. Um... And maybe we'll revisit this guy at a later time when I've had a chance to get a proper heat sink on it and stuff like that. But interesting to note, this result is actually one frame faster than the 486 SLC that we overclocked to 50 megahertz. And not after we've up. When we were overclocking the heck out of the ISA bus, that one did go ahead of this. But at a standard ISA clock speed, which is what this motherboard can manage, this is actually a little bit faster. So, yeah, interesting. This is a really capable board. While it was a bit of a nightmare to get this going, this has really been a fun project with a lot of educational stuff. I'm going to clean this up try to get Doom running and we're going to revisit this board um, hopefully soon to, you know, check out what all it can do in games and stuff like that. But for now, I want to get this posted so we can, you know, uh, conclude the giveaway aspect and stuff and the big hurdle is done. Figuring out how to get this stinking thing to do what I wanted it to. And uh, mission accomplished, you know. So, 
that's all I have for you today. I'll see you again soon.